innovate and manage uh, some of these social uh, businesses. I think three areas where banks are pretty, they don't understand social business, is around data and how this data, they can use this data. Um, as a donor agency, we've got access to a lot of data. We can tell you sizes of businesses, what sectors they are, and a lot of this is in the public domain, or uh, we think it's in the public domain. However, when the banks, uh, are, uh, some of the banks, financial institutions, have corporate social responsibility funds. Uh, but they don't know what to do with it. Their marketing departments are busy running after the easy ones, you know, the uh, salary loans, you want to get married, they can give you a loan. But they don't understand um, some of these other social businesses that are potentially very powerful. So I think one of the ways that uh, we can begin to build uh, knowledge among the banking fraternity or the financial institutions is to work through their associations, their bankers' associations, hold trainings, and uh, donors are willing to pay for uh, skills development within the banking fraternity, within uh, equity uh, fund managers on specific uh, areas, education, energy. Uh, donors, for instance, uh, have worked in the agriculture sector to build up the skill set in, uh, uh, in finance, around agriculture finance, uh, in energy, and these specific sectors. So I think that's one way uh, banks uh, can begin to understand the sector uh, through taking advantage of some of these um, uh, uh, grant funds that are available to develop uh, products, but also get at uh, building up uh, their ability to use the data on specific sectors that's available to market and to uh, come, come kind of uh, build strategies within their practices so that they can fund these um, businesses. Right. Yeah, uh, in terms of uh, quantifying impact, uh, you know, this is based on what uh, their investors uh, want to achieve. Uh, is it uh, a smallholder interface or outreach, uh, like it is in the case of the funds we manage, is it health uh, benefit, is it energy? So, but I'll give uh, the example of one of the funds where uh, the quantity or quantification of the impact was uh, clearly defined. Uh, and our most recent fund. Uh, we agree with the investor on the number of smallholder farmers that in aggregate uh, that our investment, our investing company will reach interface with and benefit directly. Uh, that is through purchasing of uh, raw material from these uh, from these smallholder farmers for processing or packing for export or for the local market. Then. We also quantify the value uh, of that purchase. And we also quantify the income per farmer. Uh, and we track that uh, in a period of uh, five years. So what is the additional income per farmer within five years? And we have very clear targets for that. So the aggregate number of farmers and the incremental income per farmer within uh, five years. Um, there's also the employment aspect and uh, whether we've uh, attracted additional capital into uh, these businesses that we've been invested in. So what is our contribution to the growth of, uh, of this business? Uh, one of our, the other fund, uh, the Africa City Investment Fund, uh, which uh, invest in seed companies, it's a very specialized fund. Uh, with that fund, we track the volume of improved seeds uh, that each investee and in aggregate are sold on an annual basis. So that translates to the access of you know, improved technology to smallholder farmers, thus you know, increasing yield. But you know, for a fund manager, you know, fully quantifying impact is very challenging and difficult, and unless you're uh, well-resourced. Um, a 
rasters here who is our impact uh, committee chair uh, is, is always giving us a hard time because impact to him is, is really scientific. For us fund managers, you know, it's numbers, hard numbers. Uh, but what, at the end of the day, what an investor wants to see is a complete story. Like, what is the transformational story of, you know, as a result of the investment? And most fund managers are not in a position to deliver that. So, over and above delivering the annual numbers, which we can extrapolate from uh, the audited accounts or financials of uh, the business, uh, we prefer working with third parties to package the story. Uh, say, for example, we set up a daily processing factory in the rural community. Uh, beyond the volumes of milk, you know, what is the transformational effect of that daily within that community and beyond? Yeah, um, yeah, thanks. I, I think I just would like to add that, of course, if you do decide that you want to go down the route of impact indicators, or, you know, impact investment, I think you're really going to have to invest in proper M&E. And, &E. and um, I think that's something that the numbers are great, you know, especially in impact, we all get emotionally on our hearts, in our hearts about what it's going to do to people, etc. But um, I think one of the big learnings uh, from the PCC example is just the, the very serious needs to come up with the whole works, your theories of change, your indicators, and the whole metric system has to really, really be built up. And uh, there needs to be capacity that goes in to really help uh, build those up and, and, and aggregate them at a level then that they can really be back again. And PCP has done a fantastic job with uh, USAID funding for um, the technical assistance. Um, so, so I think that's really helped to, to soften the, what might otherwise have been very painful uh, process. But I think the other issue just to mention is that sometimes I think we can be, again, you know, very, yeah, we want impact investments, but you think of North Uganda. North Uganda has been ravaged by war for the last so many years. And how do you capture impact for businesses in North Uganda versus businesses five kilometers from where we're sitting. And so I think, you know, it, it needs to be something that we are more deliberate about how we define it and how practically we look at it. I think one of the things we found out is that even having a business that could become a model, you know, that others could look at, in a way is social impact, you know, but how do you measure that? How do you report that? How do you back up that? So it's just to say that it's not, it's, it's, it's not a very clear, you know, there's a lot of detail that you really need to dig out and dig out here. Thanks. Hi, and just, just to answer the, the question, I'll give you a, a Kenya example just because that's where I'm more familiar with. And I think, yeah, I take your point, technology is not going to be suited to those, you know, those women in rural areas who are not literate. However, in Kenya, for example, 30 years ago, um, it was very difficult for women to get access to banking, and table banking has become very common. So KWFT, for example, is an MFI that sort of grew up in, in the 30 years, and it's now in 47 of the, you know, 45 of the 47 counties in Kenya. And what they do is they actually, you know, their field offices, they go and meet these groups of women, and whilst they're offering their products, they're also offering them, like, financial advice training. And KWFT now partners with corporations to do what else there is to benefit these women. So whether it's solar lamps or education awareness or, or, or so it's again, it, it goes down to collaboration with these MFIs, collaborating with other corporates. And that's one model where you can reach, uh, provide that sort of support to the women, you know, through these uh, women's groups and MFIs. That's, I mean, that's in Kenya. Another example in Kenya is working with NGOs. So a lot of a lot of NGOs work with um, many rural areas, with many women, and again provide uh, not only do they provide education and training, but also business help. So I, I don't know if you've heard of the BLE model, which is the village, village level entrepreneur, where one it's like the Avon model, for example, where one woman will go around door to door selling a basket of selling a basket of goods. 
Now, that, that, what that means is that, business, that women's business becomes self-sustaining with support from the NGO who provides things like you know, financial training, credit, also partners with MFIs. So I think it goes to the theme of this symposium, which is collaboration between different part partners can reach those areas as well where technology, you know, where, where technology can't reach. And I think in Kenya, at least, it, it is happening. And um, you know, I, you know, I, I would hope that it, it is happening here in East Africa, or also has the potential to happen. Okay, can we have another round of questions?